everybody. Good morning, everybody. Well, good morning, everybody. Did you know my mother? Did she give good living? Had she been baptized? Well, I've been to the river and I've been baptized. So get converted and I feel all right. Did you feel all right? Yes. Did you feel all right? Yes. Did you feel all right? Yeah. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to the loophole of retreat, Venice, day one. We are deeply honored that so many of you have traveled so far to be with us today, to be a part of this historic convening this weekend in Venice. And as you know, Loophole of Retreat Venice is conceived as an extension of artist Simone Lee's U.S. Pavilion Exhibition Sovereignty on view now across the canal in the Giardini of the Venice Biennale. This symposium brings together an eminent group of black women intellectuals, scholars, artists, writers, poets, filmmakers, and activists from around the world for three days of dialogue, performances, and presentations centered on black women's intellectual and creative labor. Loophole of Retreat Venice builds on the eponymous one day convening held in 2019 at the Solomon R. Guggenheim Museum in New York City. The conceptual frame is drawn from the 1861 autobiography of Harriet Jacobs, a formerly enslaved woman who for seven years after her escape lived in a crawl space she described as a loophole of retreat. Jacobs claimed this site as simultaneously an enclosure and a space for enacting practices of freedom, practices of thinking, planning, writing, and imagining new forms of freedom. Over the past year, I have had the great honor of curating this iteration of Loophole of Retreat with guidance from advisors Sadia Hartman and Tina Camp, who curated the original conference with Simone. We are amazed by the talent and intellectual rigor of this group of women who will be featured in our program over the next three days, and honored and grateful that they said yes to our invitation to be a part of Loophole Venice. The Loophole program features over 65 inspired black women and femmes who hail from around the globe, representing the depth and breadth of the African diaspora. We have participants from across the US and Canada, participants from throughout the Caribbean, including Jamaica, Haiti, Puerto Rico, and St. Croix, as well as Brazil, participants from the UK and countries across Europe, including Italy, and participants hailing from countries throughout Africa, including Nigeria, South Africa, Morocco, Mali, and Sao Tome and Principe. And we know that many of you have traveled from far and wide to be here, as well for which we are most grateful. We have designed this transnational gathering in the precedent of those convenings set by Festac 77 in Lagos <laughs> and Deborah Willis Black Portraits in Johannesburg and many other places. Understanding the continued and urgent need for transnational solidarity and collaboration during this critical moment for women's rights, climate and environmental justice, racial justice, decolonization, land back, and the fight against the resurgence of fascism. 
we built this platform for global dialogue. One of the incredible guiding ethos of Simone's practice is her insistence on both the individual authorship of black women and also the necessity of collectivity. Rather than ask why the appropriate platforms do not exist for black women intellectuals, Lupola of Retreat is tasked to create them. Simone has often spoken. <laughs> Simone has often spoken about black women artists of previous generations who worked their entire lives without a museum exhibition. And so the loophole of retreat makes visible this intergenerational and interdisciplinary relationships and practices that make the practices like her own and many of ours possible. In the spirit of the original loophole conference, each participant was issued an open-ended invitation to speak about her own work and highlight topics of her own interests or expertise. In fact, an early alternate title for loophole was carte blanche, reflecting the ethos of freedom that Simone wished to animate the event. As a larger framework for the constellation of presentations you'll encounter here, however, we have identified a group of key directives to guide our collective thinking. These are marunage. Maroons refer to the people who escaped slavery and created independent communities on the outskirts of enslaved societies. This directive for Lupo Venice is inspired by the artist Deborah Anzinger's explorations of fugitivity and resistance in Jamaica's cockpit country, which is a site of historical refuge and resistance for Maroons. Manual, meaning of or pertaining to the hand or hands. This directive is inspired by the Manual for General Housework from Sadia Hartman's Wayward Lives, Beautiful Experiments, Intimate Histories of Social Upheaval. Magical Realism. Rather than only a literary genre, magical realism, as defined by Caribbean poet and theorist Kamal Brathwaite, is a larger cacophonous movement with multiple representations the plural instant and collective improvisation, a radical disruption of Western progressivist history. Magically real forms are the music, literature, and movement languages developed by black people in the New World as a result of the catastrophes of colonialism and the Middle Passage, and as an alternative to insanity. Medicine. This directive is inspired by how we cope with the natural and supernatural world around us using the qualities of science, plants, and animals. It draws on our approaches to diverse ailments, physical, spiritual, natural, and supernatural. For this gathering, we consider the, root, the work of root and leaf doctors, traditional healers, and conjurers of the rural Black American South and the Global South. And finally, Sovereignty. The title of the US Pavilion Exhibition, Sovereignty Speaks to Notions of Self-Determination, Self-Governance, and Independence for both the intellectual and the collaborative, and the individual and the collaborative. We have to acknowledge, again, that we are only here because of those who made it possible to be here and the lives and work of our ancestors. So as I read the names of some specific black women intellectuals, curators, artists who have made this possible, I would invite you to also add your names and we speak them together. Peggy Cooper K. Fritz. B.C. Silva. Harriet Jacobs. Valerie Maynard, <laughs> Bell Hooks, <laughs> Dominique Malaquay, Arlene Burke Morgan, Robbie McCauley, Blondell Cummings, Samella Lewis, Ammonia Lewis, Tony K. Bambara, 
Edna Manley, Pearl Primus, Tony Morrison, Audra Lord, Abby Lincoln, Catherine Dunham, Sevilla Fort, Zora Neale Hurston, Leah Green, Nancy Lane, Octavia Butler, Betty Davis, Josephine Baker, Ethel Morris, Miriam Makiba, Elza Suarez, Big Mama Thornton, Billy Holiday, Dr. Josephine English, Betty Shabazz, Ella Fitzgerald, Elizabeth Catlett, Consuela Harris, and please say additional names. Thank you. Before we be begin with our programming today, I want to orient you to how the next few days will unfold and share a few housekeeping notes. Loophole of Retreat Venice is pleased to be hosted at the Fondia, I, I can never say it right, so please excuse me. <laughs> um, the Cheney Foundation. <laughs> Here on the island of San Giorgio Maggiore. Lupo programming will take place throughout several venues across the Cheney Foundation campus. So this morning we will begin with the full slate of programming here in the Sala de Glarazzi, the symposium's main lecture hall, with a series of talks and presentations. Following a musical performance from Lisa Marie Simmons, we will break for lunch at 1.30. During the lunch break, you can purchase food from our vendors in the courtyard and or attend a performance by Paloma McGregor. At 2.30, we will resume programming with film screenings and conversations and talks here in the Arazzi, and our performance program will begin in the theater located in the Ex Piscina Gandini, which is down this path, as well as Paloma's performance. So there will be people to direct you, as well as signage. All day long, a looped film program will be screening in the Sala del Chioso di Cipressi. You can find a map of these spaces on your brochure and loophole hostesses stations throughout the grounds can help guide you to the various venues. For the performance in the Ex Piscina Gandini, please plan to arrive 15 minutes ahead of the scheduled start time. The nearby Sala di Capriati will also serve as a lounge space and an overflow seating for the programming here in the Arazzi, which will be live streamed there. To that end, I wish to note that we have more ticketed attendees than we have seats in any individual program roomed here at the conference. We therefore encourage you to circulate to the various spaces throughout the day. We ask that you please do not leave your things or otherwise save your seat here when you leave this room in order to allow for others to, experiencing, to experience the programming. We also ask you to kindly silence your cell phones. Um, and please note that the conference will be live streamed and the proceedings will be photographed and recorded. We want to thank our many sponsors and there is a totem that thanks all of the sponsors that supported um, both Simone's exhibition and also Loophole, but specifically uh, we want to thank Simone Lee who supported a lot of the conference herself. together with Matthew Marks Gallery. Um, and also the Lambent Foundation. Um, the Ford Foundation. And Goldman Sachs for the One, billion, one Million Black Women's Program. One billion, but we are one billion <laughs> loophole participants around the world. One second. 
Um, and the, the fuller biographies um, for all of the participants can be found on the website, which is SimoneLeeVenice2022.org. Uh, but what I would like to first do um, is really, without further delay, get into the program. So I'm honored to briefly introduce the first hours of presenters at Loophole of Retreat Venice. Um, throughout the rest of the day, we are really honored that the participants will be introduced by students from Spelman College. They recently participated in a seminar entitled Simone Lee Art in Theory, which is led by Cheryl Finley. So we're so happy to have them here and to have their participation. We will start the day hearing from Vanessa Agar Jones, who is Assistant Professor of Anthropology at Columbia University, where she is affiliated with the Department of African American and African Diaspora Studies. With a focus on black life in the Atlantic world, she conducts historical and ethnographic research on racialization, environmental degradation, and the politics of gender and sexuality. Deborah Anzinger is an artist and the founder of New Local Space in Kingston, Jamaica. Her work has been exhibited internationally in museums, including a solo presentation at the ICA Philadelphia in 2018. Kinesia Lubrin is a writer, editor, and teacher based in Whitby, Canada. Her books include Voodoo Hypothesis and the forthcoming Code Noir. She teaches at the University of Guelph, where she coordinates a creative writing MFA program in the School of English and Theater Studies. <laughs> Mabel O. Wilson teaches architecture and black studies at Columbia University, where she also serves as director of the Institute for Research in African American Studies. Amongst her books are Negro Building, Black Americans in the World of Fairs and Museums. Her installation, A Way Station, The Architectural Spaces of Urban Migration, is on view at SF MoMA through May 2023. Thank you.